Good afternoon, everyone. Well, it's afternoon here, anyhow. I don't know what time you're going to be watching this. It has been a long, long time. I do have a day job, which keeps me pretty busy, and there's a lot happening there. So I've been pretty busy with it, and a lot of the stuff that I'm doing here is going to wind down because of that. But today I'm doing something for somebody. I thought I'd take a moment to talk about these little chintzy Chinese intake manifolds. When you buy a VM22 clone carburetor kit, uh, usually on Amazon or eBay or wherever, it'll come with one of these, and there's even one of the more popular uh, suppliers online. I'm not going to name them by name, but they sell one with their initials on it, but it's basically the same Chinese thing. Man, just don't, don't, don't do it. Spend the money and get something different, and th th the reason is... One of the things I don't like, now this one does not have the problem, but very often your bolt, your socket head or Allen head screw will not fit. You either have to grind a flat in the manifold itself or grind down the head of the screw. It's just, it's just chintzy. And then on this other side, eh, screw those cheap Chinese. That's the other thing, Chinese fasteners, man. They're garbage. Just garbage. Don't do it. I'm going to do a video on fasteners and where I get them. But... This other side here, it's slotted. Then your carburetor, it seals with that O-ring. And you're trying to adjust that thing, trying to get your carb level, trying to get that centered. And I see so, so many with vacuum leaks. Won't start. It won't idle. It won't this. It won't that. And they have a vacuum leak there because that's misaligned. And I've seen people smear RTV silicone all over them. And then that gets sucked into the combustion chamber. I mean, it's just... Don't, 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 don't. Save yourself a headache. Buy a real intake manifold. This one is from EC Carburetors. I really like it. Yeah, it's 30 bucks, at least at this time, but that's the side that goes onto the cylinder head. I've got a couple socket head screws that go in there. Recess it and hold it in. Some studs, and that carb is aligned perfectly. You do not get a vacuum leak. It's high quality. Just bite the bullet and do it. If not this one, another good one. EC Carburetors, I found, is the best source. I think Big Block Clones has some of their own uh, that, that, are, that are really seem to be good. I haven't used them, but they, they look pretty good. But buy something decent. Don't use this little 99 cent. It, it's a piece of crap. Now, I know I'm going to get a lot of hate from people. Oh, I use one and it works just fine. And oh, I saw so and so down in Southern California. He's got a badass mini bike. And he's got one. I'm not saying you can't make it run. I've installed, God, probably 75 or 100 of these by the, at this point. You can make it work. You can make an engine run. But just save yourself the headache. Reduce the chance of failure. Spend the money. Buy yourself something good. And I'm going to get set up and bolt this on an engine here and I'll show you the process. And We'll get it running. Okay, we've got our EC carburetor manifold here. Comes with these pocket head screws or Allen headed screws that have been machined down to fit in those recesses. We've got a gasket on there. Just going to go ahead and start getting those installed. Make sure our gasket doesn't slip out. Start them by hand. You notice I'm not using any thread locker on these. I am a proponent of thread locker. But if this is something that may come on and off frequently, you can end up in this aluminum causing problems with threads and stuff. More permanent, I might use a little thread locker if it's really vibration prone, but this won't be. Snug those up evenly and there we go and then we have these studs that thread in hold the carburetor we also have a three millimeter allen in the end let's just run those in by hand and then we'll just Take our Allen and cinch them up. 
then our carburetor is going to go on like this. Now with this one, I don't need to modify my choke. That's good. So it's going to be kind of a weird angle to get the nuts on there. So I'm going to turn the camera off and get that on, and we'll be back. All right, there we go. We've got our carburetor mounted. You can see our EC manifold. The other good thing about this is it's a little shorter. Now that might affect a little bit of power at the top end, but it's negligible, if any at all, depending on your combination. So I'm not too worried about that. But what's good is it may it pulls that carburetor in a little bit. It's a lot more a little more, little more compact. So your air cleaner and stuff's not sticking out so much on your mini bike. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up, get the throttle hooked up. Uh, go ahead and run my fuel lines, my drain lines, and all that good stuff. I did rejet this off camera. I'm going to start with a 130, I think is what I put in there, and then we're going to tune it from there. Ultimately, it needs to be on the mini bike or go kart or wherever the application is and used to really see what jet it needs. You know, you're going to read that spark plug. But I'm going to get it running here on the stand. So be back shortly. All right, we got the carburetor on there. I've been running it. I got it reasonably adjusted. Like I said, it needs to be adjusted on the application. This one's going on a mini bike, mini bike, go kart, whatever it's going to be on. So I'm going to pull it through the compression stroke. Yeah. <laughs> 